Hello and welcome to the very first lecture within this module. So within this lecture, we're going to learn about Azure flowchart, uh, where we could decide about what kind of you know, computing services we need to you know, go for it. So in the previous uh, slide, which we try to learn about a different type of services that are available within Microsoft Azure Cloud, uh, we talked about the virtual machines, bad services, functions logic apps but we never talked about uh, how to choose this how to choose the best one uh, which actually work for us so for that there is a flow chart that we can talk about it and um, we will talk on that flow chart to learn more uh, when to choose the cloud optimized strategy for your migration or maybe lift and shift all of that stuff we're going to talk about uh, within this lecture so if you could look at this a uh, flow chart which will help you to decide what kind of services you need to choose it let's say you want to choose a virtual machine don't go directly you try to evaluate or try to begin with a starting point for your consideration as a start button and uh, apply your thoughts or apply your requirement within this flowchart and see where do you actually end up you might be you know, end up with AKS or maybe somewhere else we never know so we need to apply the requirements uh, within this flowchart to get more information and uh, let's begin that so on this diagram you could see here when you try to start any, uh, any requirement here you need to you know, think out think about it whether it's gonna fall on a lift and shift or you're gonna migrate into your new build uh, in case in most of the cases it will be lift and shift from your on-premises or maybe a cloud optimized uh, then let's say you know let's talk what what exactly cloud optimized it's a strategy for migrating uh, to the cloud so basically it's just a strategy to migrate to your cloud but the cloud optimized uh, refactors on application uh, to take advantage of cloud native features or capabilities that's where it's gonna uh, work on the uh, cloud optimizer let's say if it is a cloud optimized we are gonna you know look at whether how best it's gonna actually work with your native applications all of that stuff and if it is a lift and shift then the strategy migrates your workloads without uh, without the redesigning the application or making code changes so there's no code changes it will just lift from that place to another place that's how it's going to work that's called you know lift and shift so you could see here uh, if it's a lift and shift then uh, can it be a uh, container based if so you know you might have to you know think a uh, lift and shift uh, case into maybe AKS or app services or you need to you know uh, go for full-fledged orchestration then it might you know uh, differs with your decisions so if you're need fully orchestrated then you would you know go for Azure container instances instead of AKS so that's where uh, it comes to the picture and also you also have to look at in this diagram let's say if it is in a web application then go for Azure app services if it's a virtual machine based its requirement then we'll end up with a virtual machine so same thing so this is under lift and shift and cloud optimizer side if you could uh, think about uh, HPC workload or is it uh, microservices or is it even event driven workload with maybe a event trigger then you need to you know uh, run some kind of a you know, code or function then we would look for serverless uh, technology which is into Azure functions and also if it is a full-fledged orchestra that we just discussed about container services and if it is a needs a dotnet integration fully supported microsoft technology stack then azure service fabric we would be using otherwise we will end up with the kubernetes services aks so this is a flow chart that uh, we can use for deciding but at the end you might be you know decided uh, to host it some way right so the hosting again also have a, a factor where you're gonna host it so coming back to the hosting side you might have to you know, think about whether 
it is really infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service or function as a service because the developer uh, which is here uh, which is showing here these two functions and data he's gonna responsible and he will be uh, more more working on this but well as a cloud provider here in the uh, background with the dark color which would would be taken care by your cloud service provider the full responsibilities but you need to think about whether what kind of hosting platform you're going to choose let's say if you're uh, planning for infrastructure as a service uh, then you might have to think uh, the individual vms that you are going to create it and along with that their networking the storage components even what not you are going to deploy what are the software and applications that you wanted on those virtual machines so this model is closest to your traditional method uh, or traditional on-premises environment except that microsoft is going to take care of your infrastructure so you it, it's still managed by your virtual machines by you and whereas the platform as a service is not like that so the more responsibilities goes to uh, Microsoft when compared with infrastructure as a service um, so platform as a service is going to provide you to manage the hosting environment so where you can deploy your applications without needing to manage any kind of you know, virtual machines or networking resources so that all stuff would be taken care by Microsoft and as your app services is a platform as a service for example so that's what uh, if you could you know just go back here a few of the workflows we talked about here which uh, which which was very clearly told that some of them are a pla uh, platform as a service or uh, when we try to migrate the azure services here so for example here app service or maybe container all of that stuff so we need to you know just you know look into that direction and when I, when it comes to the functions as a service uh, which is going even further removing the uh, need to worry about hosting environment so you don't need to worry about any kind of you know, hosting environment uh, with respect to the applications so because applications will stay somewhere right so you don't need to worry about that so fast model you can deploy your code that's it and the service automatically runs on its own uh, but you need to you know integrate the stuff that you need to you know work the way you want to to fulfill that specific requirement so as your functions as a service is a great choice for uh, if you don't want to manage any kind of vms or networking stuff uh, then it's the best stuff best stuff to you know manage and uh, hope this concludes a little idea on uh, flowchart what we are trying to talk here so just to you know conclude here we were talking about what kind of you know computing service to be decided based on the flowchart we can think about whether we want to migrate or we want to go for a new build if it's a migration there are two options one would be the cloud optimization other one would be the lift and shift so in which uh, flow we have to choose so that's again a consideration question and then all of this stuff will again point somewhere in a built a new application case for example if you could see here a case was ended here same thing it might be the building application will you know have a self question it is do you uh, do you really need to control full control on the hosting platform then you would actually choose your virtual machine if not you may be thinking that you want a higher performance computing workload then it goes to the azure batch file or batch services and then microservices architecture there's a container kind of thing you might have to you know think here app services and uh, even uh, even driven with respect to the azure functions let's say if email sent or received something to something gonna happen or if this has this value then do something else then you would be not looking into the azure functions and also if you are looking for full-fledged orchestration then container instance and all of this uh, flow chart you need to you know uh, learn you of course you know uh, to be to be frank with you you might not be clear at this point of time because we are all gonna again sub um, sub flow charts we are going to learn for example if you are talking about a, a virtual machine we will you know build an additional flow chart like this similarly for every service that we are going to look at here uh, we will have our own uh, customized 
flow charts to learn more and more so it's a good to learn uh, at the end of this section you can come back here and have a look on this specific lecture or on the specific flow chart especially then you will learn a lot i hope this is a uh, uh, introduction just the introduction lecture but it, it will be useful for you thank you